Oh, he's a good boy. All right, if you want to start. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can, uh, just tell me if you can't hear me. I'll, I guess I got a, get a set of pipes here. I can you know if I want to. So. <laughs> but good morning. Um, welcome to Legacy Church. Um, just a, a blessing to have everybody here in our new setup here. Yeah. Our brand new setup. And uh, we'll see how this works. And it's good. we'll be able to save on heat a little bit, on oil a little bit. Oil companies might not like us, but <laughs> God, God's providing the heat today. So yes. So, yes. so, uh, so we're uh, not don't have any anything with the the songs on it. You know, uh, nothing on the screen. So we're we're uh, limited to hymnals right now, and uh, so we're going to start with number thirty four. How great thou art. We just really want to, so I, I invite you to stand if you feel led, and, and um, I'm, I'm not saying maybe by next week I'll have this stop, so you stand better. Good morning, Wes. Good morning, Wes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, uh, yeah, this just, we just really want to exalt the Lord, and um, what, what one of the better songs to exalt him with, uh, speaking about his creation.
for Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross. That's uh, number 407. So while you're turning the pages, I'll just say, I uh, just thank the Lord for sustaining me through this time. I, uh, I called uh, Pastor John the night before our outdoor service thinking I just needed a couple days to rest, not realizing how serious that my, didn't realize my kneecap is separated from my quad tendon and, and that I would need surgery and much recovery and still kind of recovering. Pray that I'll be driving by Friday and returning to work by, ne by next Monday. And, and uh, But I really thank the Lord that he provided Mike to to uh, do the music for these last uh, couple months and and uh, now uh, many might, might know that Mike is sick today so uh, he, he needed a break though he really did <laughs> um, I'm thankful that Pastor Don was able to come and pick us up and uh, get me here in time but uh, just uh, this is all because of God you know God has, has sustained us through through uh, and Betsy through a tough time and we still got a little bit of a tough time left to go and we just really want to thank him and thank you for all your support and prayers and everything. Yeah.
each other's joys and sorrows and just to support one another. So rejoice that we're here and we have the freedom to be here. Amen. All right, so just a few quick announcements. Next Sunday is the deadline for Operation Christmas Child. You can either A, bring them on Sunday or arrange with me to bring them sometime during the week. Um, you know, just message me, and, you know, anytime during the week, um, just bring them to the church and then we'll deliver them. Also, November 20th is our community Thanksgiving luncheon. If you haven't signed up, you can talk to Melissa or me after the service. There's still a few things that we need. And just so you know, this year we're going to donate any leftovers so we can bless the police and fire stations of Sutton and God will provide and we can just be a blessing to them. And lastly, Sunday, November 27th is our last Chain of Lights meeting. So I ask if you can all be here. It's our last meeting to just kind of go over last minute details and, you know, before we get ready to be able to bless the community that way. Thank you, Natalie. My nightmare was that we were going to crash over there. Um, all right. So I'll tell you before I go into focus prayer. Um, if you have your Bibles, because of course we didn't set up a computer or anything today, uh, we're going to be in Second Corinthians five. So you can start flipping ahead. I've been told by so many people. Remember, uh, we're going to be. You're not going to have your computer. You want to give us time to open up uh, to the proper channels and I was like yeah and then it dawned on me I was like you know what I can do that right now by setting us up so yeah. but this is our time of focus prayer and oh yeah before I forget so uh, I know some of you just came in um, this is our new setup for the winter uh, this is something that um, the leadership and Ed talked with about and um, to save oil because we all know uh, right now inflation and oil prices are killing everybody. Uh, we decided it would be best to be in here because this room heats up and it's well insulated. Um, and uh, pretty much we can heat it up once and turn it off and it will stay at 68, 69 uh, for the rest of the day. So that's what we're doing. In there, it's not insulated. It takes a while and just burns through oil. So with that, our entrance is going to be, our main entrance is going to be the back door again for now. We'll have this door open for people like, I know Steve needs it right now with his knee. So um, that door will be open still, but the back door will be the main door. So that way there, as you come in, you can, file in. All right, focus prayer. So uh, we got a lot of people out sick today, uh, a lot of people traveling, and we want to lift them up in prayer this morning. Um, we want to lift up um, a lot of churches. Right now, we're not the only church that's doing this. Uh, as I was, me and Natalie were doing this all the last couple of days. Um, I put a couple of pictures online and I had pastors tell me that they're they're having to resort to the same thing. So we want to pray for not just our church's finances, but other churches' finances too at this time. We also want to pray for um, you know this Thanksgiving luncheon. There's there's some some real buzz going around there. And I really am praying that this is going to be a, a great outreach opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. um, so. Be ready. I know some of you might be like me. I'm an introvert. I know it doesn't seem that way. I, I would prefer to be like in a corner and quiet, but um, God 
gives me what I need to be able to talk. And uh, you know, I ask you pray, pray for God to give you the words to say when uh, you see somebody here who you don't know and talk. I know, I know Jeff's a good person with that. Jeff always, when we get visitors, he'll always go up and introduce himself and find out stuff. So uh, if you ever want, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put him on the spot and say, if you ever want a, uh, a person that you can watch and learn from, Jeff's that person. So. Sometimes you just don't stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> but we love you anyway. Love you. Uh, and um, that's it. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. And Father, we pray for those who are uh, not here this morning due to illness or other reasons right now, Father, that you would just be with them, help them, um, heal them, Father. Um, touch their bodies. I know many people have doctor's appointments this week, Father, for different things. Right away, I up Steve with his appointment Friday that he would get good news and find out that he's able to drive now, yes. Father. I know that there are other people right now who are not here and um, they have appointments coming up uh, that have to do with heart and liver and other issues, Father, that they have. And we, we lift them up to you, Father, and just ask that you would just touch their bodies. Father, let us always remember that no matter what, and I thank you for Betsy who reminds me of this, um, that no matter what goes on, we are yours and we are in your hands. And so, Father, we just ask that we would remember that, that no matter what our health is, you are ultimately um, in our lives, controlling and, and shaping us and touching our bodies and can heal us, Father. So we just ask that right now. Father, we also ask um, that you be with the other churches this morning that are meeting similarly in fellowship halls and uh, places where they're not meeting in their sanctuaries, Father, because, um, you know, this this economy is tight, Father. You are, the, you are the owner of the cattle of the Thousand Hills. And so, Father, we ask that you would provide, not just for our church, but for these other churches, Father, that you would pour out your blessing, pour out your love, Father, and just help, uh, not just us, but these other churches, Father, meet the needs so that we can continue in your service. And Father, we do lift up the Thanksgiving dinner and we ask, Father, that you would um, just be willing to go and um, pour out your spirit in this place. Father, let us get to meet people. Let us get to meet our community. Let us get to know people and uh, get them interested. Find out why this church is here and why we enjoy being as Natalie said earlier that we are truly a family. We truly bear one another's burdens. And Father, that we uh, want to share that with them, Father, and welcome them into the family too. Mm -hmm. So we just um, lift up all these things right now to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. So we're going to uh, be, like I said, 2 Corinthians 5, and the verses are going to be 11 to 21. And um, depending on your Bible that you have, uh, it probably has a little thing up there that says the Ministry of Reconciliation. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be going into uh, discussing the church and what is the church, what is the mission of the church. And a lot of people, there is that one Sunday school answer that I, I, I use that term lightly. But there's the Sunday school answer, you know, worship God, you know. But there's more to it. Why do we worship God? Why do we love God? Why are we here gathered? Why do we call ourselves a family? So there's a lot to learn about being the church. And this is just one of those things we share in the ministry of reconciliation with Jesus. And Paul writes, beginning in verse 11, he says, Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others... But what we are is known to God, and I hope it is known also to your conscience. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving, giving you 
cause to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast about outward appearance and not about what is in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And, I, and he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who, was, who for their sake died and was raised. And from now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespass against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, we be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become righteous, the righteousness of God. So, when we ask ourselves, you know, what is the church? Um, I would say the short answer, the short answer, would be um, souls saved by the grace of God, called to his purpose. And what is that purpose? In other words, the people who have made Jesus their Lord and Savior and professed publicly, been baptized, and then in a relationship with other believers to grow in their faith together. And in short, it's a family. It's, it's like Natalie said, we're a family. Um, we, we come together, we share with one another, we talk with one another, we wanna know what's going on. You know, in a church, in a church family, a proper church family, there's gonna be no perfect church. In all honesty, if we're, if we're honest, there's no perfect church. We serve the perfect one, but because we are human and we make mistakes and we do things, the church is not perfect. But we worship the perfect one, and it's in him, as we read in this verse, that we are forgiven of our sins, that we, our trespasses are remembered no more, and that we have come in to share this ministry of reconciliation. As we talk about the church, it can be complicated or uncomplicated. It depends on how much we want to go to define it. But there's one thing, one thing that I want you to think about today, as we're meeting in this room, that building is not the church. The world calls that building as they drive by, oh, look at that church. We are the church. Amen. The church is the people. And like I said, if that something happened in that building that we couldn't use it anymore, thankfully we've still got this hall to meet in. Mm -hmm. And we are still the church because we are a body of believers called to gather and worship him. So then, if that is the thing, we have to look over what God has given us, the gifts he has given us, the ministry he has called us to. Paul calls us ambassadors. What are we ambassadors of? What are we doing? He has called us to this ministry of reconciliation. Once our relationship with God has been restored, we are called into his service. So here's the thing, for a lot of people, it, it becomes hard for them to understand. Um, we talked about this last night, um, at, at, at doing discipleship, um, is uh, there are people who are believers, and people, uh, all disciples are believers, but not all believers are disciples. And what that means is, We come together to worship God, but if you're not actively trying to find out how to be involved in ministry, and not necessarily ministry within the church itself, but actively representing Christ 
in your workspace, in your, uh, with your family and friends and other people. We've got to find that balance. We've got to be able to do that. God has called everyone to service, and that service is being part of the ministry of reconciliation. God has commissioned us to share his message of love and peace with others. Moving people toward a reconciled relationship with God may seem daunting, especially in our postmodern culture that exalts moral relativism. In other words, what is right for you is not necessarily right for me. Well, here's the thing. If that is true, then let's think about this. And I don't want to get deep in philosophy, but pretty much it doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or an atheist, you would agree that murder is wrong. So this moral relativism of what is right for you is not necessarily right for me is a wrong belief because we have absolute truths. Murder is one of those things. We all can agree that absolutely murder is wrong. And if somebody murders someone and it's not justified, in other words, you know, if, if somebody was attacking Natalie and I had to protect her and, you know, I ended up having to use brute force or something and that person died, the courts would look at it, try me, and find me most likely innocent and justified. We're not talking about that. What we're talking about is premeditated murder. You know, serial killers would sit there and say, well, yeah, I'm, I'm born this way. I, this is the way it is. That's what we're talking about, this moral relativism, is they try to say that it's right for them but it's not. God has called us to this point to bring about his message. Paul told the Corinthians that we must open our hearts wide, allowing God's compelling love to flow through us to others. Many people today do not understand. They do not understand what love really is. A lot of people may have come from broken families. They may not have had a, a good, loving parent relationship. And so they struggle. They struggle to understand God as Father. If God is this all-loving Father, what does that mean? Because my Father beat me. And they struggle to understand that. My Father belittled me. They struggle to understand that. But we come to understand that through us, through our ministry of reconciliation and showing them where God is love, they come to understand these things and come to show it. Well, what is the ministry of reconciliation? The ministry of reconciliation is actually quite a big thing. Now, I come up here and I talk evangelism a lot, and that is the number one thing. It's evangelism. It's sharing Christ with others. We look at it. In verse 11, it breaks it down that it is evangelism. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. But what we are, what we are is known to God. And I hope it is known also to your conscience. When God provides an opportunity, share the message of reconciliation clearly with your words to the lost. Estranged people who desperately need the peace with him through Jesus Christ. In other words, be alert. Always be prepared. Peter talks about this in 1 Peter. He says, always be prepared to give a reason for your hope. And that's what we want to be able to do. We want to be able to share. Why? Because in a hurt world, one of the things about a church is a church is always going to be a hospital for the hurting. And if that person is hurt and they're struggling to understand because of things going on in their lives, you may have the ability to share something that you have gone through similarly. And that's what God wants to do. And in that, you're sharing Christ. You're sharing what Christ did for you. And that is evangelism. That is telling how God's love shared with you and how those things went. The next point is this. It's listening. 
we look at what Paul writes here. He says, we are not condemning ourselves to you again by giving you cause to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast about outward appearance and not about what is in the heart. For we, if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. So one of the things that we want to do is we want to seek to understand people's viewpoints. We may not agree with their opposing viewpoints, but we want to seek to understand them and, and talk to them. And sometimes we have to choose to listen rather than argue. And we live in a society today where too many people argue their point. And that's why a lot of people are turned off to God, because they don't want to sit there and listen to you because this person over here just hammered them. Like, you know, we, we hear the old term Bible thumper. You know, they were just sitting there taking this, hitting them over the head with it. You know, in verbal sense. Instead, we have to remember Jesus told us that we have to be as wise as serpents but also as gentle as doves. And it's knowing when to say the proper words, but it's also knowing when a person is so deeply hurt that they just need to be listened to and understand where they're coming from. Jesus did that in his ministry. He would hear. We think of him with this, there's many times where foreign women came to him. Um, and we remember the mother that comes to him asking him to heal her daughter. And she, Jesus says to, him, to her very abruptly, you know, don't you know I've come for Israel first? And she says to him, but even the dogs get the scraps from the table. And Jesus knew what that meant. And he said, I have not seen a deeper faith than this. Whatever it is that you are asking, it is done. And that's what we have to remember within our lives, is that when God calls us to sit there and listen to people, even if we don't agree with them 100%, we need to listen to them and see if there's ways that we can minister to them in their hurt. The other part, and it kind of goes with the listening, is self-control. We look at what he says here. For the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Self-control. In this day and age, we look at um, this week, Elon Musk buys Twitter and what happens? Like, all the people that are upset with it are, like, just blasting and throwing out all this stuff. And it's just causing further rift and, and division within our country. And we pray, you know, we pray. I think churches need to be praying for healing within our nation. Yes. We need to be praying for that. We cannot see revival until... Well, I should say revival is the start of the healing of our nation. And we can't see that until we understand the self-controlled thing. So here's the thing. Refuse when you're on social media to engage in divisive posts and tweets. Choose instead to post comments about God's goodness. You know, I've been trying my darndest th this week to post verses. And even if I post a verse to the church page, I'm like sharing that. Because that's what people need. People need that. And I hear it. Like, I'm surprised. Like, kids in school that found out, hey, Mr. McKinnon's a pastor. And now it's like, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm hearing from some of these kids that, yeah, that thing you shared, that really spoke to me today. And it's in those little things that God allows a door to open up. And believe me, there's no group hurting worse than high schoolers right now. There's a lot of things going on in their lives that we need to remember and be there for and love on them. Share the blessings you and your loved ones have experienced and give the glory to God. The fourth point is this, be unbiased. 
We look at what Paul says, From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. Too often, too often within churches, too often people sit there and they hear of somebody coming to Christ and they, they can't see that. They can't celebrate it. They should be celebrating it. But they think of what that person was like in the past. They think of that person like, oh, I remember you. You know, you were a troublemaker. You were, you were, I remember you going in the store and walking out with like, you know, $20 worth of stuff under your shirt. And, you know, there's no way you're saved. That's not what we're supposed to be. We have to learn to trust God and that He has really brought this person to salvation. And holding on to that biasness that we have can sometimes hurt more than heal. We have to understand that. That's the one thing we want to do. We want to understand that God is in the business of healing. Amen. He is in the business of renewing lives. He's in the business of making things new, as this scripture tells us. And in that doing, in that alone, that part of the ministry of reconciliation is important. Because if we hold on to the biasness, if we hold on to what somebody did in the past, we are sinning. We are sinning against them. We are sinning against the Lord. And we need to ask forgiveness. We need to sit there and really ask ourselves, what is going on? The fifth point is itself the ministry of reconciliation. And this is the rest of the this is the rest of the text here. It says, All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. Think of that, not counting their trespasses against them. Don't hold on to that bias. Ask the Lord, if this person is truly saved, show me and help me to love them as my new brother or my new sister in Christ. And entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. Think of that. We are ambassadors. Our brother is the king of the universe. And in that, we have that right of ambassador. And you look at what's going on now, you know, with, with the queen passed, and now we have King Charles. And you look at what's going on within the family, how the family roles are changing over there in England. We don't understand that because we're from the West. We're, we're here in America, we have a president. And it's really hard for us to understand that because, you know, we got election day this Tuesday, so there's going to be some seats that flip because people are like, I don't like this person, I'm voting the other person in. So people will vote. And we do that. We, we look at, like, how it is. We change presidents, we do those things. And this is what we have to understand is a monarch is a ruler for their life. Unless they're overthrown, yes, but nobody can overthrow God. And that's what we have to understand. Christ's throne is everlasting. And in that, in that one part, because it is everlasting, we have to keep understanding that our role as ambassador is to represent him in a Christ-like attitude. And that's what we start to understand is this is what it means to be more Christ-like. As we grow in our faith, we become more Christ-like. We grow and mature in our faith. And we have to have that. We look at the rest of the verse. God is making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our, for our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. See, that's, that's Christ's ministry of reconciliation. Christ lived that perfect life. He didn't have to die for us, but he chose to die for us. He chose to be the once and for all sacrifice. And because of that, because of his 
love for us. And that sacrifice, his blood was shed. That blood pours on us. And because that blood pours on us, it makes us so that God can look at us. God can't look at sin. We look at Jesus dying on the cross and it says that God turned away. Jesus sits there and says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because he took the sins of the world on him and became such in a way because God cannot look at sin. The ministry of reconciliation involves the proclamation of the gospel, assuring that forgiveness of sin is available in Christ. Sin prevents us from having that relationship with God. But Jesus' perfect sacrifice became our atonement of sin. And otherwise, it was that once and for all thing. And because of that, harmony is there between us and God because of the ministry of reconciliation. Sin made us God's enemies. Jesus took that sin upon the cross, satisfying God's ju justice. Jesus' death made it possible for us to have peace with God. And that's what we see in verse 19. It says, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them. Now we can sit there and call God friend. And Jesus can call us his brothers or sisters. Those who have been justified through the faith of Jesus' blood no longer have their sins counted against them. They are reconciled with God. So, where do we go in closing? Where do we go on this? <coughs> I'm still getting over my cold. Uh, and the next point. One, evangelism. When God provides an opportunity, share the message of reconciliation. Share what they need to do to have peace with Jesus and God. Be generous. Generosity is a gift. It's not just giving more than you need to at church. Sometimes, you know, how many, how many of you have gone to buy a cup of coffee and you get up to the window and the pe person's like, um, yeah, you don't have to pay anything. It's been paid by the car in front of you. You know? That is generosity. Some people sit there, they look at at your car. They're looking at that license plate. And then they see you somewhere else and they're like, hey, I want to thank you for what you did. Things have been tough for me. And I really needed a cup of coffee. I probably shouldn't have been buying it, but you provided for me. And then you sit there and you say, no, God provided. And you bring that in. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Send handwritten notes to, of thanks to people who impact your life. A mail carrier, a doctor, or a neighbor. Tell them why you consider them one of God's blessings in your life. People like to hear that stuff. They might wrestle with, with the idea of God, but they're, they're going to be open to this. Hospitality. Invite a neighbor or co-worker to share a meal with you. If you're not a cook, meet at a restaurant. And pay for it. Or pick up the food and bring it home. And they'll never know. They'll think you're like a great cook. <laughs> um, express your appreciation and give God the glory for bringing that person into your life. Share experiences that point to your relationship with God. The fifth one is this, boasting in Christ. This is one I always have to do every time somebody says, it was a great sermon, and I don't always do this, but if someone compliments you on how you handle a situation or say something, glorify God by explaining that you sought his guidance. As we point to God's work in our lives, the evidence of his grace, forgiveness, faithfulness, and attentiveness to us can create a hunger in that person's heart for such a relationship. And lastly, scripture. You may find it helpful to list, uh, to find the lists of the fruits of the Spirit. 
which is in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And put those on a three by five card or even, even you know, put them on your smartphone. Uh, maybe you have the Bible app. You can take like a quick screenshot and keep that. They help us to remind us that we are producing fruit compatible with the role of the ministry of reconciliation and conflicts and problems and frustrations that arise. We look at the at these lists of the fruits and we pray for guidance. And if you're like me, man, being transparent parent here, if you're like me, you need time to time to pluck the seeds of anger and defensiveness and jealousy from your heart. If possible, if somebody has done something against you, wait a few hours, even a few days, before you respond to the situations, allow the Holy Spirit to plant the right seeds in your heart so that when you talk to that person, you're talking to them in that ministry of reconciliation. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we come before you now, and Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, that we have been able to gather here this morning and worship you. And Father, I pray that for many of us, we would um, go forward with this knowledge. Father, even, even for those who do it and those who struggle, Father, you would just pour your spirit out. Father, maybe maybe those who think that they haven't done it, hearing these lists, hearing these things, they realize that they are doing it. They are uh, part of that ministry. And Father, I pray that you will grow their ministries and help them to touch the lives of those around them. Father, I pray that we would be able to touch the lives of those around us uh, this Thanksgiving and for Chain of Lights and for Festive Family Film Night, mm -hmm. Father, that we will be able to see things grow. Now, Father, I just pray that we would have our hearts clear as we prepare to remember that sacrifice that gave us the ministry now as we prepare for communion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So, um, I feel weird because I'm doing everything today. <laughs> um, it's been a while. But um, I want us to think about that when it comes to um, just this moment talk about the ministry of reconciliation part of the ministry of reconciliation is that we examine our hearts many of us uh, sit here and we take of communion but we don't always examine our hearts properly and one thing is, is as we just talked about we don't want that anger we don't want that that shame that guilt to just build up in us because Christ himself gave himself willingly. And we look at how Christ, after he was dead, buried, and resurrected, we see his ministry of reconciliation begin. The first person he reconciles with is Peter. Peter sits there at the Last Supper, and Jesus is telling them that one of you will betray me, being Judas. And he says to him, Lord, I would never betray you. And Jesus looks at him and says, Peter, before the cock crows three times, you will have betrayed me three times. And we read where he does that. And he runs away in shame. And then they're sitting there on this beach and they're having breakfast. And Jesus asks him three times, Do you love me? Do you love me? And Peter says, Yes, I love you. It doesn't make sense for us that, you know, for, for, for many people they say, Well, Jesus asked that three times because Peter denied him three times, and so he needed to do it three times to forgive him. No, 
Jesus is God, God can forgive sins like that if He so chooses. The careful thing is in the Greek, the, the words used... Greek is an interesting language. You know, English, English has gotten away from the old English. The old English, we had uh, three ways to say you. You know, you, ye, um, the, thy, thou, thou. <laughs> but we look at that, and in the Greek, we see that love has five different ways of saying it. There's a father's love you know, or a parent's love for their kid. There's the romantic love. We call that eros. It's where Ares comes in, the god of love in Greek mythology. But the two that Jesus uses here is philo, which is brotherly love, and agape, which is God's unconditional love. And the thing we have to understand here is that when Jesus says, do you love me the first two times, he's like, do you agape me? Do you love me unconditionally? And Peter's response is, yes, Lord, I feel oh, you. And Jesus asks that third time, do you feel oh, me? He says, yes, Lord, I feel oh, you. And it doesn't make sense, but it makes sense because the thing is, is Peter was close to Jesus. Peter had a brotherly love, and he felt this embarrassment. And Jesus chose at that moment to reestablish that connection with him. So I want us to take a few seconds and really focus on ourselves to see where we are with God. Do we feel of Him? Do we agape Him? And then I'm going to pray. I'm going to uncover the elements and um, we can come forward. I'm also going to ask you because um, we don't have closing music today, so I'm going to ask you because um, it seems like it just happens this way. If you have an offering, you can bring it um, to the front too. Um, this is this is where the church is set up like a temple. And this table here before us is like that altar. And so that's why we have the elements and the tithes, because it is the sacrifice and the sacrificial giving that we do. So I'm going to ask you to take a few minutes and um, just examine your hearts. <clears throat> Father, we thank you that we can come before this table this morning and remember the sacrifice of Christ, your Son. And Father, I pray that as we take of these elements, you would remind us that we are your children, we are your sons and daughters because your only begotten Son saw no other life except a life where we were reconciled to you. So Father, we just ask right now that you would bless these elements as we prepare to take them. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. uh,
So this cracker, a symbol of the bread that Christ used on that night. Um, it's got scarring. It's got not not perfect. It's it's kind of what Christ's body became during that sacrifice, and yet. It was still, as we hear, beautiful to see because we know that that should be on us. And it should be hard for us to think about, but at the same time, it is a beauty. A beauty that we will one day see in the hope of our resurrection or in the second coming of Christ. So take and eat all of it. Likewise, the blood, the blood of the new covenant, the once and for all, the fulfillment of the old covenant, fulfilled in Christ because of that love for us. And now we can take it and remember what Jesus said. Take ye all. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the remembrance. Father, we thank you for the sacrifice. We thank you for this time. We thank you, Father, that we have been able to give back two of our first fruits to you. And Father, we pray that you will use it and multiply it because we believe that you will. Now I ask, Father, that you will give us all a good day as we are dismissed. Stand for the benediction. I'm not even going to look in the Bible. They taught us, sometimes you got to come up with one at the top of your head. And so here is my benediction for you. May you go in the peace and love of Christ. May you go as his ambassadors. May you go in the ministry of reconciliation, sharing that love that you hold in your heart sharing it so freely that Christ is seen in your actions today and every day. Go in peace. We are dismissed. Hello. So we can drag the chairs to the next one. Oh, okay.